Hi there and welcome back to 1225 Live. This is now the 10th episode in a 12 episode special edition uh, that relates to our current sermon series on the book of Ruth. Today we're offering a few additional thoughts on yesterday's preaching passage, which was Ruth chapter 4 verses 1 through 10. One thing I didn't delve into in yesterday's sermon was the language uh, surrounding the person of Ruth. So, for example, specifically, uh, in verse 5, Boaz talks about Mr. So-and-so acquiring Ruth uh, to, be, uh, uh, to be his wife, should he decide to um, agree to the deal that's being presented. And then down in verse 10, Boaz himself says that he has bought Ruth to be his wife. Well, of course, the language of acquiring and buying Ruth uh, strikes us kind of odd, and it may not sit very well with us, is the text implying that Ruth can be simply acquired and bought and sold uh, like property for a husband. Well, here it, it serves us well to do a little bit of homework uh, concerning the Hebrew language that is behind those English translations acquire, bought, or buy. Uh, the Hebrew word that is used in both verse 5 and verse 10 is the same word. It's the word kana. And sure enough, the basic range of meaning of that word kana is to buy, to purchase. However, when we look at the use of this word in other places in the Old Testament, some other places at least, what we find is a close connection between the word and the concept of gracious redemption, or the concept of um, a merciful redemption of a person who is in great need, or persons who are in great need. For example, in Exodus chapter 15, which of course is the great hymn of victory that Israel sings right after they have been delivered so miraculously and graciously by the Lord through the Red Sea. In that hymn that they sing, uh, in verse 16 of that chapter, they use the word kana. They talk about how God had, in that delivery, God had purchased them. And that purchase there, of course, is a good thing. It is a thing that God has graciously wrought. And only three verses earlier, in verse 13, there uh, it is said that the chesed of God leads toward redemption, redeeming the people. So in chesed, God leads them to redemption, verse 13. And then verse 16, God kanaz them, he purchases them. In that context, uh, these concepts of God redeeming them and purchasing them are not very far apart at all. And then also in Nehemiah 5 verse 8, <clears throat> there, there are some Jewish brothers who are said to be kanad, bought back from the nations. And in that context, again, this is about a person or persons with means who graciously deliver people out of their trouble. So I don't think that Ruth 4.5 and 4.10 should be offensive to us, this use of the word kana in both of these verses. This is not about a sort of dispassionate uh, buying and selling Ruth like a piece of property. Rather, what it's about is Boaz lovingly, mercifully, self-sacrificially taking Ruth under his protective wing. In fact, redeeming both Ruth and Naomi out of their trouble. And of course, when the Apostle Paul uses this language of buying and being bought in 1 Corinthians 6.20, certainly it doesn't offend us, does it? We as believers have been bought with a price, with the high price of Christ's precious blood. He has done this in merciful, self-sacrificial, amazing, undeserved love toward us. We are bought with a price. And all of it has been done by our nearer Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah for his purchase of us 
where would we be without it? Well, for now, every blessing to you, and we hope to see you back here next Monday afternoon.